measuring shoulder external rotator strength. Just relax. Um, this is her left shoulder. We're going to use a goniometer called a universal go goniometer. I've, I've actually attached a bubble level to this one, uh, but any goniometer will serve just fine. Um, I'm going to help my patient externally rotate her shoulder to its full end, uh, or into the full end range position, until I get to the R1 position, okay? Not allowing any, any scapular movement, okay? And once she's there, I'm going to have her hold that. If she can't hold that, I'm actually going to help her hold it there, but she's doing just fine, okay? We're going to find that, uh, that angle, make sure we're level. Okay, we're at about 58 degrees. Don't know how much of that was visible on the camera. We're going to give her a two pound weight. We found here in the clinic that the two pound weight seems to discriminate uh, the best uh, patients with rotator cuff damage, either tears or weakness. Okay, and I'm just going to have her do about half a dozen reps. I'll help her through the motion just so she's aware of how, what the motion should look like and feel like. Now, try to keep that. There you go. So it's coming straight up. There you go. Excellent. Bring it up. Bring in this last one. I had you hold it up there. Now, in this one, I'm not going to help her. Okay, that's as good as you can do. Got a hand here making sure she's not substituting or compensating. Okay, and I'll be as quick as I can because we know sometimes that people who have shoulder pain have weakness in their rotator cuff and she's got 45 degrees and rapidly getting less so okay so 45 degrees and 58 was the initial value so that's a 14 degree difference that 14 degrees is an objective quantifiable uh, amount of rotator cuff um, weakness